Hi friends! This video is kicking off my revamped series of diving back into Pat McGrath Labs Mothership palettes. I do have a playlist covering all the palettes in her collection. Well, at the time, the ones that were available. But since I did my ultimate guide video, I've become inspired to dive back in again to encourage you if you do own a palette or a few all of them, you'll be inspired to use them again. I could go in order of palette release, but I thought a little randomness wouldn't hurt anyone. And reading some of the comments from my ultimate guide video, I was inspired to start this with bronze seduction. When speaking about bronze seduction, I was saying that I don't reach for this palette often because I don't consider it a daily friendly one. What I failed to realize, however, that daily friendliness, special occasionness, comfortability, right, all depends on one's skin tone, on one's makeup vibe. So I do think if you are me or deeper complected, this very much well could be an everyday palette for you. If you are lighter than me, I can't understand the intimidation because these shades are very rich, they're vibrant. In this video, I wanted to cover the different approaches you can take with bronze seduction, different ideas, and I would love for you friends to share your favorite combinations down below because I think it'll be nice for our fam to just get the brain sizzled up in using bronze seduction more. To quickly go over the anatomy of bronze seduction, you usually have your mattes, your metallics, and your jewel, your how do I say this? It's your sparkle toolkit. You basically have four shades in every Pat McGrath palette here at the end that serve as your dazzlers, your shine, your glitz. You don't have to use them every day, but I do recommend that you feel more comfortable doing so. And maybe you had problems with these textures. So this is also another reason why I wanted to dive back into these palettes is to cover the different techniques that I thought helped Helpful for myself in working with these textures. I'll bring you through different ways. You can just use one shade, how to combine them and all that stuff. So with all those details out the way, why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. Start with your favorite primer. Slap it on those lids, why don't you? Now, if we wanted to just start off as basic as possible, know that every Pat McGrath palette has a Skin Show shade. Now, in this case, this is called Skin Show Divine Glow. It usually comes in a variety of beige, champagne, pink types of a hues. So this is the one that exists in Bronze Seduction. It's definitely one of the more champagne leaning skin show shades out of all the palettes Pat McGrath has. And if you just wanted to use one color from this palette, you can take your favorite pencil brush. It could be smaller than this or even a smaller shader type brush. Pick up some Skin Show Divine Glow and just place it here on the inner corners of the eyes. What this will do is brighten up the inner eye area. You could flick the edges of that application so it doesn't look abrupt to make it appear more diffused. I also like to take a little bit of this shade right under the brow bone because keep in mind, these are your highlighter points of the face, the inner corner, the brow bone. This does pack a lot of punch, so you don't have to pick up a lot of product to get the right amount of glow on the brow, but I really love how that coincides with the highlighter stick I applied on my cheekbones. You could even pull it down a little more so it's closer to the cheekbones, or even because this is an artistry palette, you can use it on both eyes and cheeks, picking up a more traditionally shaped highlighter brush. If, if I could find one, excuse me. We could pick up some Skin Show Divine Glow and tap it over whatever highlighter we have. I highly recommend that you prep your cheekbone maybe with a balm or a stick or you spritz first just so that the powder can melt evenly over the skin. And that's a great addition if, again, you wanted to amp up your highlighter, just add it here on the inner corners, brow bone, add some more on the cheekbones. If you like to do the nose thing, you know, you could do that over the cupid's bow and you don't have to apply mascara either maybe some blush 
and you're done. Now the matte shades pack quite the punch, so we could go in several ways. You can just use the matte shade all by itself. If I wanted to, I'll pick up a, a bigger brush, one that covers the surface area of my lid. This is my Tonsado brush. It comes in a four piece set. I'll pick up some of a, uh, entrapment and this is one of our fan members most favorite combinations Taya. i actually screenshot what she had said let's take it us take a look my absolute fave is entrapment in the crease with rose gold all over the lid and extreme aubergine in the outer v Woo. i love also using disobedience all over and putting vr fire opal on top well, thanks for those suggestions, friend. I think Entrapment is a great color to place all over the lid. And again, this is really nice just to have as your one and done shade. Again, you don't have to necessarily use all the colors at once. I have to sometimes stop myself and remember, hey, you got 10 shades doesn't mean you gotta use eight of them all at once, you know? So as you saw, I placed the majority of the mat on the lid, and now I'm using a tapered brush to just pull it through my crease a little more precisely. And I'm taking this color under the lash line as well. I like my looks to appear hazy in nature. You don't necessarily have to take on this step, but no, if you wanted a little more smoke, you can. Now I got a little messy here, so what we can do, if this happens to you, I like to take whatever concealer brush you used at the time when applying concealer. You can just tap around the edges here to lessen the smoke around the lash line, or you could do your eyes first and then apply your complexion makeup afterwards. I just put on the Glam Core because I thought it was getting a little dark, so if you don't mind, I wanted to give you a heads up because I know you guys like to see these colors in action in natural light, but sometimes natural light is it's not giving me enough. You know what I'm saying? As another tip, you find that you need another color or another powder to blend the edges of disobedient or even entrapment, you can go in with your favorite face powder, one that might have a little more color depending on your skin tone. Take the same brush and use this powder to blur the edges of that shadow. This will allow you to refine the blend without necessarily adding more color so that you are more in control of how the shadow looks. You can produce a more blurred blend. And again, from here, you can just apply your mascara. You could go in with falsies. Taya had said she goes in with rose gold. Taya also went in with extreme aubergine on the corners. But just to quickly go over, now we're going into the jewel box of bronze seduction. We have the, excuse me, sorry, let me get the names. Rose gold 005, VR fire opal, blitz flame, and astral luna gold as you can see this is a baked formula i would highly recommend that you go in with your fingers because that will ensure the most product pickup right look at that shine versus if you just use a brush you will pick a product but it will appear very veil like in nature if you want the most impact use your finger pick up and i'm swirling and twirling you really want to get in there and after that place it over whether it be a bare lid or in this case if you're following along Taya's favorite eye look you could place it over entrapment and because the nature of the formula is not your traditionally made shimmer or metallic so the edges will have more of that scatter effect versus more of that blurred effect so just be prepared for that, right? I think it's quite beautiful, you know, to have this laid over a mat or even on its own. And I think that's such a beautiful addition to the look. I brought it towards the edge of the lash line. If you wanted to follow along Taya's look, you could have placed Extreme Aubergine first and then go in with Rose Gold 005 afterwards. I think it's quite all right actually to apply Rose Gold first and then we could go in with Extreme Aubergine. If you're not comfortable going in with the matte now, you wanna try it however, I recommend picking up a shader brush. This one is a little longer bristled than the usual shader brush. It has nice movement and I like to use the these types of brushes when applying the deeper shade 
on outer corners because then you can pat this down in a manner that you would, let's say, a metallic or shimmer shade on the center of your lid. But because it is fluffy as well, it does the blending for you. So you don't have to over manipulate the skin. You'll lay it where it needs to go. And then you can use the same brush just to flick it in towards your crease. Because I'm doing this afterwards, it's picking up a little bit of the rose gold, but I actually don't mind it. It's nice to have that sparkle all over if you want it, you know, just for it to spread out a little bit more. And if you wanted to use your bigger blender brush, you could just lightly graze the edges here just to encourage the shadow to look more blurred in nature. I'll return to the shader fluff hybrid brush, if you will. I like to place uh, the deeper color under the lash line, just, you know, one quarter in. And again, we could just pat around just to kind of clean that up. Now, again, I have rose gold scattered along here. I don't mind. That's just something that you might run into if you decide to apply rose gold first before extreme aubergine, or if you wanted to go in with disobedient on the outer corners instead of extreme aubergine. Just know when you add this shade, it's going to give fast smoke. So we definitely went from daily to evening just from one shade alone, but I think it's quite beautiful, especially how rose gold just has magnificent shine it almost looks wet on the lid and thank you Taya for sharing that combination because I also think placing it on top of entrapment gives it a little more earthiness versus if you were to apply this by itself it might have appeared a little more silvery given the nature of the shade now if you wanted to amp it up even further that's where I would suggest you go in with either VR fire opal or Astral Luna Gold. Let's try Astral Luna Gold. There's no need to pick up a lot of these types of textures. I find if you tap once, that's all you need. That's all you need. Place it over whether it be at the center of the lid, in a corner, and I just, that's enough. You don't need to, you don't need to do this, right? This is where you're gonna run into issues because if you look up close, Look how loose the particles are. That's gonna fall down into your eyeball. That's gonna fall onto your makeup. If you're trying to avoid that, don't pick up more than what you need. If you insist on using a brush, which I understand, if you don't like to use fingers, just tap the brush once and then tap it along, again, where you want this shade to be placed and that's all you need you don't need to overload lid and i think that's a great way to go really nice smoke now something i wanted to do is go in with guilty pleasure because i had expressed how this could be a tough shade to work with i'm going in with my finger swirling and twirling and i'm placing that just over the lid you can go in with a matte first and then apply this afterwards. It could be a nice everyday shade because I feel it's taupey hue, uh, categorizes it as a neutral. I am taking my blender brush. Now, it might be a little, see that? You'll probably run into fallout because of the, the nature of the shade. If you insist, however, to place this in your crease, that you will need a brush to do that with. But no, you will run the risk of getting fallout. So you might just want to apply the shade all over the lid and then maybe use another matte or apply the matte first and then guilty pleasure over. But I actually think that quite nice. I love the shade. It's very soft. It doesn't come out so like, whoa, especially with a shade like Blitz Flame. We can go in with Disobedient and maybe trace the upper lash line here as a means to get a little bit of smoke but not necessarily smoke out the outer lid. And again, these mattes pack such an amazing punch that the way, I mean, look at the richness of color. Even me just applying this over 
another shadow. It looks like I applied a liner. It's it's insane. I realized that Taya had said fire opal <gasps> on this. This is so pretty. I mean, you could do both. Isn't that marvelous? Amazing. So fire opal definitely is going to give it a teal flip. If you wanted to keep it more rose gold than the astral luna gold shade is going to further amplify the gold hue but maintain the rose undertone taking a little bit of my rcma you could also take your favorite concealer i'm just cleaning up a little bit here under the wing so it could appear sharp huh so here we have guilty pleasure with disobedience as a shadow wing and on this side we have entrapment rose gold 005 and a combination of astral luna gold and vr fire opal here we have a finished look of guilty pleasure with disobedience as a shadow wing liner and on the other side we have taya's look with entrapment all over the lid crease topped with rose gold 005 extreme aubergine on the outer corners and a mixture of both vr fire opal and astral luna gold these are not bad to start with i especially like this one i think this could be very daily friendly because again you don't necessarily have to use the mats as smoke tools right you could see extreme aubergine definitely made this look smoky you could have stopped at entrapment and rose gold 005 you could have just relied on the rose gold if you want it more sparkle and shine then you can top the lid off with either vr fire opal or astral luna gold i think either of those are great options but as you saw rose gold 005 has such beautiful shine all on its own and i think it's nice to apply on top of one of the mattes again to give a little bit of that earthiness and groundness if you wanted it to be a little more silvery sparkly then yes i can understand you applying it by itself or perhaps over the intensifies if you wanted to add a little more of that adherence it could be a glitter glue as well all right let's take this off and venture into maybe blitz flame on the next round all right we got fresh lids i really want to explore blitz flame because as i had said in my ultimate guide video when applying blitz flame all on its own it does deliver a lot of impact it's a show stopper moment and who you know who am i to say that you can't wear that all over your lid buff the edges go in with extreme aubergine on the outer corner even disobedient i mean it's, it's a beautiful look okay i wanted to see if we were to let's say go in with disobedient all over the lid because i think if we apply this first and then blitz flame on top we can then kind of lessen the intensity a little bit but that red shine over the mat might add a really nice moment. So I use my big fluffy brush to place Disobedient on the lid. And now I'm going into my blender here with just a little bit of product to pull through the crease because you could just see on its own, if you just wanted a, like a smoky eye, one mat, that's it. Disobedient all over the lid. Or if you're deeper complected and you just needed a little bit of something on the lid, you didn't want to go into the shiny shades, you could just do that. If you're lighter than me, then you could use Disobedient as your liner or a little bit of smoke on the very outer edges. If you wanted to place this on your lid but needed something lighter to blend out, then use your favorite face powder to make that happen. Okay, so. Like I mentioned before, if you want the most impact from the Dazzle Shades, use your finger, swirl and twirl, pack it on. However, if you want it just a light dosing. Let's see here. I'm going to use, I'll use my other Tonsado brush. This is the YKQ12. Picking up some Blitz Flame and just lightly pulling that across the lid. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to purposefully not apply a lot versus if you were to pack it on, it will show as super red. But now that we've applied it on top of Disobedient, it made it more into like a, almost like a terracotta. It's almost like a copper now. I think the red still shows through is quite beautiful, but I think you can rely on this technique to incorporate Blitz Flame if you wanted to wear it during the day. 
you know what I'm saying? And again, this this side, I always overblend. I don't know why I could never get it right. It's one of those things. If you wanted to amp it up, yes, this is where you will go in with one of the actual shades. As I demonstrated in the first demo, one tap of your finger or light tap with your brush, tap it on. But even with Blitz Flame by itself, I think it has really great shine. This almost reminds me of Corruption. Remember Corruption? It first appeared in the 2017 holiday release. It was a duochrome shade. It has a little more gold than what's happening now, but it's a nice combination. I'll take a little bit of Disobedient with a smaller shader brush, pulling it across the lower lash line here. I'll use the same brush to pick up some Blitz Flame and right on top, just so we could pull everything together. We could go in with the Skin Show Nude Shade as our inner corner highlight. If you want it, you could pull it a little bit in on the inner corner, but something I like to do, as you probably already know, is introduce another color to the mix. This time we can go in with Bronze Blaze. Bronze Blaze has a lot of texture. So actually what I'll do is now use my intensifies because I think this will help the stick a little bit better. So let's put that, let's put that right on the inner part, but I'm overlapping that first application, you know, just in case if the shadow travels a little bit. Then with my pencil brush, I'll press bronze blaze right on top of where we applied intensifies. And now we have that beautiful gold copper hue on the inner part of the lash line. If you wanted to keep it much more simple, you could have just kept Disobedient and Blitz Flame here, but I think really nice that we can apply another shade and not take over the lid, but still have a role in the look. I'm just flicking up the Skin Show Divine Glow a little bit here so it can appear more cohesive. Oh, this is great. I have to do this more often. Oh, I feel so bad. Now, if you want to just do a little, a little bit of the Astral Luna Gold, I'm talking like the lightest tap. See that? Right on the center, just here, nothing more, just here. See how that brings it a little more forward? I'm telling you, these pack a lot of punch. You don't have to cloak your lid with an Astral shade. You can, you can. This is really for those who don't use this often because they feel it's just a lot to deal with. But I like how that further highlights the red, that shiny spot that appears bright when the light hits. Adding Ashalunal Gold, I think just, it's almost like I have a flame on my eye. And we like that. Not actual flames on the eye, just the effect. And if you want it, you could just let the sparkle travel as it likes throughout the crease, right? And when it settles and the light hits it, it's just so beautiful. Now that we've explored Blitz Flame a little more, I want to, hmm, now a great opportunity to now see what happens if you apply Blitz Flame straight on your lid. And in that case, I am just going straight in. So this is much different, just so you can identify the contrast. Isn't that crazy? And this is what I was speaking about before in my ultimate guide. I have a hard time going in with like this on a daily basis. Not someone else, however. Some of you are like, listen, blitz flame all day, every day, that's it. But I like how we combined it with disobedient because then we saw it can be tamed. <laughs> the, the flame can be contained. But give it up to the blitz formula in it just being versatile in terms of it not needing a mat for blending out. I simply just picked up more in my Miseholt brush and the nature of the formula is just very smooth on the skin. You see how it blends and blurs on its own. I'm just taking a very light flicks here to bring the color up in a, in a gradient type of a manner. 
you don't want it to travel as high keep it closer to your crease use a smaller brush so you can contain that blend and like everything i have done so far even under the brow bone you can use your favorite foundation brush or even concealer brush just to tap down the edges and you'll again have better control of the blend you could also take skin show divine glow and apply the shimmer here so that will also blend down the blitz flame a little bit if you want it and of course why not let's take it along the lower lash line here this is a great holiday eye one and done the foiled effect of blitz flame i think just beautiful if you wanted to wear this shade exclusively but if you wanted to tone it down then you could apply it on top of any of the mattes in here now i'll go in with rose gold 005 this time as our inner corner highlight i think this is a great pairing you don't necessarily have to rely on the skin show shade depending of course on your complexion because yes maybe rose gold might be too deep on the inner corner for you but if not go for it if you wanted to do vr fire opal i'll take the same brush i applied rose gold with tapping and now i'll press that on the inner part of the eye overlapping where Blitz Flame and Rose Gold meet, topping that with Rose Fire Opal. And this is such a great way to, again, incorporate these textures. And I think it's so nice that it scatters up. I know it's hard to see, but it flows up into Blitz Flame in a way that I think is like a nice introduction of a different color. You don't have to necessarily always place it on the center of your lid. In fact, in addition to where I just showed, you can tap this on the center of your lower lash line. Sometimes I like to rely on this technique so it could appear like you're crying dazzle. That's always a nice region to go in with these astral shades with. If you wanted to make sure that it's in there, you could use your finger to really tap it down. You could also use the intensifies first before going with the fire opal shade. Now with extreme aubergine, I just want to lightly graze the edges of my upper lash line because I think this is such a nice combination. The eggplant shade with the red can be quite beautiful. Now, you don't have to go overboard here. If you just want it a little more of intensity, you can just take it right to the edge of your lash line. Or if you wanted to take it up, just a little bit and I'm using light strokes to encourage the shadow to follow the blend of Blitz Flame, right? I don't want it to take over like a Disobedient did in the first demo. And here's a wide shot of both looks, primarily using Blitz Flame in two different ways. You see on this side, we place it over Disobedient, topped it off with some Astralunal Gold and Bronze Blaze on the inner corner. On the other side, we primarily use Blitz Flame all over the lid, crease, and lower lash line, added Rose Gold on the inner corner with a little sprinkle, if you will, of VR Fire Opal. I think we're on a good pace with this fam. Let's Let's do one more demo, maybe using Bronze Blaze as the main stage shade, and maybe Extreme Aubergine will lower the lid and crease. I'll see you back here in a bit. Last round, I'm definitely going in with Extreme Aubergine, just, you know, just to start things off. It packs quite a punch, so if you don't want to go this route, I totally understand. Just quickly covering the different ways you can incorporate Extreme Aubergine into your eye look. As you see here, all over the lid first, or in the first demo as a wing liner and some outer lid smoke. Or excuse me, it was the second demo I used Disobedient as a liner. I think you can see that this will serve as a, a wing liner for any of the shadows here in the palette. Alrighty, it's all over the lid. It's no additional product just yet. I want to blend the edges first. You could keep that by itself or you could go in with another matte. In this case, I'll use Entrapment as my 
a diffuser of choice just to soften the edges a little bit if you want this to be exclusively extreme aubergine pull it through the crease and definitely the outcome will appear very smoky in nature i'm placing it on the inner corner just so that there's no patchy spots here everything looks pretty even i'm actually taking a little bit of extreme aubergine just with the tip of the brush and hitting it the crease right there so you got a little more color but also you can still see that really nice gradient from extreme aubergine into entrapment so we could stop right here lashes mascara whatever you want keep it top lid heavy or you could follow through with either entrapment or extreme aubergine on the lower lash line so if you want to fully commit to the smoky look i think it all depends on your eye size your eye shape you know sometimes it might not serve you depending on what you're going for to place shadow on the lower lash line that's that's not for everyone right so choose accordingly feel it out i like shadow under my lash line which is why i take the step i also took a little bit of entrapment with that same brush to graze the edges of extreme aubergine i think it nice so it could appear a cohesive what's happening on top what i like to do now is actually go in with guilty pleasure with a pencil brush and just pull it here right on the inner part of the lash line i'm actually want to layer that over the matte application now guilty pleasure if you already know has some fallout so just kind of whisk it away in upward motion so it doesn't stick to the face uh, several ways you can go in with any of these shades here if you wanted i can then apply some intensifies on the inner part of my lid right here where there is no shadow now several things you can go in with blitz flame i think that a really nice opportunity to introduce another shade but it not be your typical gold or champagne and add color to the look you can use any of the astral dazzlers to place over the intensifies i think we should go in with bronze blaze i know i had mentioned to use it as a main stage shade but i think it quite helpful to use intensifies with this shadow because it's going to give you the right stick and then the shine will be incredible now as you see we're dealing with goldy bronzy moments so why not let's take some astral just tap it right over bronze blaze and look how that just amps it up it makes it appear more shiny gold you know if you wanted to go that route i still love that we went in with guilty pleasure on the bottom here and i think that also might inspire you to pair extreme aubergine with guilty pleasure if maybe you had wanted to apply extreme aubergine on the outer corner and crease and then go in with guilty pleasure on the majority of the lid that's also a beautiful combination i'm just kind of refining guilty pleasure here a little bit yes that's what we like to say ooh, ooh, ooh. alrighty it's time let's let's do the map first okay disobedient on the crease i'm gonna fluff that in real quick intensifies on the majority of the lid bronze blaze definitely going in with a finger swirling and twirling you want to pick up as much as you can and right over the intensifies. Oh, I definitely picked up more than enough. I'm pressing, tapping to evenly distribute the shade. If you want this to be more precise, you can wet your brush too with the product, with the shadow already on the brush. That will ensure that you don't ruin the pan, right? We want the shadows dry in the actual pan so they last longer. You could then tap your brush a little more dry if you want to go in with a little more shadow and wet it again, but avoid spraying the brush and then going in the pan. You want to uh eliminate as much moisture as possible from your palette because if you want these to last longer than a year 
then that's what I would do. I'm going with a little bit more of Disobedient to kind of whisk away any shadow that traveled up too high, but check that out. I am feeling, hmm, maybe we'll take a little bit of Blitz Flame and tap it on the border between Disobedient and Bronze Blaze. That's really pretty. I like that introducing the red color so it could be more of like that gradient effect. Disobedient here on the lower lash line just so that we can tie that together. What shall we place on the inner corner? Well, definitely I wanna go in rose gold. I think rose gold will be nice here right there. You could take something a lot smaller. This is a little big, but I don't mind. It's still fairly tapered. Who am I kidding? Alicia, just take a smaller brush for crying out loud. I'm wrapping it up toward where bronze blaze ends actually. Hmm. So this is how it looks without any of the actual shades on top. But the finale, VR Fire Opal, okay, right here. And that just turns it into a teal lagoon dream. And notice I didn't I didn't pick up a lot. I did not pick up a lot at all. And just check out that effect. And also because we placed some Blitz Flame there, I think it's nice to have that peak of red. You could go with however you want to with this combination. I just wanted to throw as many options out there as possible but clearly you can see you definitely have opportunities to layer these shades. One, two, five, however you wanna go. All right, let's wrap it up with some lashes and I'll be right back. And here's a wide shot of our final round using Extreme Aubergine all over the lid with some Bronze Blaze and Guilty Pleasure. And on the other side, we went wham, bam, all the way, Disobedient through the crease, Bronze Blaze all over the lid, topped off with the VR, Fire Opal, Rose Gold on the inner corner. I mean, we went, we went crazy. But I hope this workshop <laughs> helped you in diving back into Bronze Seduction again. And it really helped me appreciate uh, its characteristics more. And I wanted to do this because I think I was holding myself back in appreciating Bronze Seduction more more and what it has to offer. Will I be reaching for this more than Midnight Sun or even Sublime? Probably not, but I think now I kind of opened my eyes a bit more. I gave myself more options and, and increased the possibility of me using this palette more often for some daily moments. Again, not going overboard with layering tons of shadows, maybe using one matte instead of three, layering over with rose gold, bronze blaze, guilty pleasure. And even as we saw with Blitz Flame, when applied over the matte, it tones down the shine naturally. So it's not going to be as shiny as you would apply it solo, especially with a glitter glue or even an intensifies like wand, it's going to make it more subdued and I think more wearable on a daily basis. And it takes a life of its own and that was a nice surprise. So let me know if this will help you use bronze seduction more often or if you already love Mothership 5 and now you're going to try these different combinations and also more combinations in the comments so we could uh archive these bronze seduction recipes. I'll see you down in those eyeshadow recipes, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Eyeshadow Palette Workshop or Monthly Fave. Take care and I will see you again soon.